Park Rangers say it was likely caused by humans. And the dry conditions there are certainly making things not easier for first responders. Yeah, a lot of dry weather in the metro as well. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bill Ramby. Bill? Yeah, Rob and Julie, we desperately need some moisture really all across the state. And uh, while a few areas will get some showers, we're not looking for much here in the Omaha metro. Slow go traffic southbound on the Kennedy Freeway from I-80 is awful because four lanes are merging into one lane. And we've seen that for recent weeks. It's, uh, it's a tough situation. 79 degrees, really lovely evening. Otherwise, 44 dew point, air is dry. Temperatures mostly upper 70s now on the Omaha Metro, though it's still 80 Fremont, Tacoma, and 84 in Lincoln. Breeze out of the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. No rain close to us on Super Doppler 7 radar. We see the showers in parts of central Nebraska, but that is still mostly light there. Something's better than nothing, but it's not much more than nothing. Partly cloudy, comfortable tonight in Omaha. Stays warm with more clouds Tuesday and then hoping for at least a little rain chance Tuesday night and Wednesday. Here's the 12 hour. Temperatures in the 60s for most of the evening with partly cloudy skies. Back to you. Thank you, Bill. To that devastation in southwest Florida now, ABC News reports tonight at least 94 people have died because of Hurricane Ian. The American Red Cross is on the ground working to help survivors of the hurricane. You can help in that effort. You can call this number 402-522-7777. You can also scan the code on your screen with your phone to donate online. Okay, TV News Watch 7's Bill Shammert is standing by at the Red Cross phone bank happening right now. Bill. Rob, Julie, I've got some good news. Those one, those phones are still ringing, as you can see behind me. Two, we've tripled the number since five o'clock up to more than six thousand dollars raised. I'd say I'm shocked. I'm not really shocked by the generosity of Nebraskans and Iowans. Uh, joined by Red Cross volunteer Wason Dunn right now. Uh, Wason, you were describing to me why Hurricane Ian is making things so difficult and the type of communities that it really ravaged. Yes, the, the, the challenge here is many of the communities that were impacted uh, had primarily retirees and others on fixed incomes. And in addition to that, the infrastructure is totally gone. Some areas, in fact, are still very difficult to access. So these people have no place to live, no place to go, and it's even very difficult to get supplies. For example, more than 600,000 people are still without power there. So the Red Cross is trying to help everybody by providing food, shelter. Uh, we also provide emotional support. Uh, we help people uh, financially in certain cases uh, because the need is overwhelming. You told me there were nearly 3,000 people as of last night in Red Cross shelters. So when people donate money, whether that's 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, where does that go? That money goes directly to the relief effort. We use that to pay for shelter supplies, pay for the feeding, to transport our volunteers down there. For example, more than 1,500 Red Cross volunteers from around the country have deployed into Florida. The funds are used to get the people down there. They're not paid because they're volunteers, but we have to get them down there. Uh, and there's just a whole plethora of things that are needed to support a disaster like this. Everything from cleanup kits to a comfort kits, which is toiletries for people. So the need is truly overwhelming, and the response so far from Nebraskans has been very gratifying, and we hope that continues. An overwhelming need. You've been doing this for a decade. Where would you rate this, rate this and what you would think is one of the costliest disasters in, in U.S. history? You know, it's too early to tell in terms of an actual number, but just based on the widespread area of devastation uh, and how severe it is, uh, this is certainly going to be one of the more costly disasters we've seen in a long time. Wason, thank you so much for joining us today. And one of the things that the people here keep telling me is when they're taking these phone calls, a lot of them are saying, I want to give back because I know somebody down in Florida or South Carolina impacted by Hurricane Ian. That phone number one more time, 402-522-7777. Back to you. You bet. So many personal connections. Thank you, Bill. Here's another look at that number. You can also find a link to the online donation portal. Just go to KETV.com. Prospect Hill Cemetery temporarily closes to the public after an act of vandalism. The Gravesite's Board of Trustees says someone removed a bronze gate and took chunks of marble slab from inside a mausoleum. Prospect Hill says the vandalism is both costly and hazardous. The marble ceiling panels over time have bowed and they are no longer secure. If one of those was to fall on a human being, it could very easily be lethal. 
Cemetery says it will remain closed until it can get the money to repair the mausoleum. They're hosting a volunteer cleanup event Saturday morning, looking for people looking for help to cut weeds and collect debris across the cemetery. That's from 8 to 11. The Nebraska Department of Agriculture confirms two more cases of bird flu today. One case was identified in a commercial flock in York County, the other in a backyard flock in Box Butte County. Department of Agriculture says both flocks will be humanely depopulated, brings the total number of cases in Nebraska to 11. Time to get up consumer alert. It's high V voluntary recalls eight cheese products due to a listeria scare. Products were made by Old Europe Cheese out of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Also makes some products for Saputo Cheese USA. Most of the cheeses were Brie, Gouda, or on cheese boards or in gift baskets. So far, no illnesses have been reported to hy V. We do have a full list of the products and UPC codes on the KETV mobile app. From the Nebraska State Capitol, the state senator of Legislative District 4 is term limited. Well, now two candidates say they want that seat. Next at 6, we're going to introduce you to who's in that race and why they want your vote. Stay with us. We still have another 15 minutes to call into our 7 Can Help Red Cross Hurricane Ian Recovery Relief Telethon. The number's on your screen, 402-522-7777. Volunteers are taking your calls, taking donations. Well, two candidates are looking to represent District 4 in the Nebraska Legislature. Yeah, Republican Brad Von Gillern will face independent Cindy Maxwell Ostick. The seat is currently held by Senator Robert Hilkeman, who's term limited. KETV Newswatch 7's Jonah Gilmore spoke with both candidates who say they are the right person for the position. 
Cindy Maxwell Ostick wants to protect abortion rights. She says when it comes to a woman's body, the choice should be theirs. No one wants these extreme bans in our state. I'm talking with voters who are very worried. There's a real choice this coming November about how we can have um, our freedom to make our own family planning decisions. I just trust women to be in charge of their own reproductive plans. Her opponent, Brad Von Gillen, says he's pro-life, and to him, that goes beyond advocating for birth. Pro-life means uh, caring for the baby, caring for the mother. It means doing all that we can to care for them. If we're going to restrict abortion further, we need to be sure that we are supporting those, those parents and those children in a way that, that gets them through life in a productive way. Both candidates promised to help families in their district planning to tackle inflation if elected. One of the biggest things that we can do here in the state is again manage our tax plan and make sure right now the state's sitting on about $2 billion of excess revenue. One of the first things I'd like to do is figure out how to get some of that money back into the hands of taxpayers and that would be a direct relief. But we need to remove barriers and um, things like um, daycare elder care, those types of things are very expensive. And if we could help incent companies so that they could support their employees, I think that would help us fill that gap. Von Gillern says he also plans to address public safety and education. We need to make sure that we're paying enough to those teachers and those paraeducators to keep them in the industry and to entice new people into the industry. Ostic focusing on property taxes and growing small businesses. That we help these companies find good employees. We have more than 50,000 jobs open in Nebraska right now. Companies can't grow if they don't have enough employees to help them do that. Both candidates vowing to make change in the legislator if put into office. It's important that we remember we can disagree on how we get to solutions, but I know most of us agree on what the issues are and our values. The object is to get things done for the state of Nebraska, for the people of Nebraska, and if we don't talk to one another, we, it, we're never going to get anything done. Joe Gilmore, KETV News Watch 7. From Omaha's weather leader, Chief Meteorologist Bill Ranby with your accurate weather now forecast. It's Ranby Factor time. This evening gets a Ranby Factor of 8. It's beautiful right now in the Omaha Metro. Got to get outside if you can. So far today, on the hour, at least 81 the high temperature. I think it might make it to 82 in between hours. 52 the low temperature, well above the averages. No rain, really needs some. Six and three quarters inches below average moisture year to date. Look at the golden glow of beautiful downtown Omaha. The sun getting low in the western sky just a couple minutes after 7 o'clock sunset now. 79 degrees, southeast wind 13, dew point 44. That is very comfortable dry air, 29% humidity. A lot of mid 70s at this hour over western Iowa and still some low 80s in eastern Nebraska. Tacoma, Fremont 80, Beatrice 80, Lincoln Airport a little warm. Dew points in the 40s throughout eastern Nebraska to western Iowa. Just a little bit of a southeast breeze, so very comfortable evening. No rain close to us on Super Doppler 7 radar clouds. We've seen some mid and high clouds, but a lot of sun getting through. And then the rain out here across southwest, central, northeast uh, Nebraska. But even that, pretty light, not a great deal of it reaching the ground. The weather pattern kind of blocked. This is the remnant of Ian sort of sitting off the east coast. It's not a hurricane anymore or anything like that, but just slowing down the jet stream pattern. Well, the European computer model has some decent rains for parts of north central, northeast Nebraska, but just Two hundreds here, that's not very much, and that's through Sunday for rainfall. Here's this front slowly moving eastward, still kind of blocked by high pressure at the surface over the Great Lakes. So we'll get some clouds tomorrow, maybe a couple of sprinkles or a passing shower tomorrow evening. Upper level low kind of rotates in here with a chance of a few showers into the mainly morning on Wednesday and then moving off to the east. But cooler weather is coming after Wednesday. Tonight's low 52. That's pretty comfortable with partly cloudy skies. More clouds, but mostly dry and still up close to 80 for a high temperature. Slight chance of showers Tuesday evening, Tuesday night, Wednesday. Wednesday's high 75. Thursday's high 67. Friday's high 56. Wow, what a change over the next four days. And then uh, potential for some morning frost if the winds are light enough on Saturday morning. Good looking weekend. Nice fall weather.
Rob, a chill will be in the air. Oh, I love it. It's brisk. <laughs> it's refreshing. <laughs> you guys are good. I like it. Thanks. Sure. Well, and a nice honor for one Husker defensive back and Mickey Joseph in Nebraska. They're right in the middle of the wild, wild west. Andy Kendi has a story next. Live from 7 Burlington Station, this is KETV Newswatch 7 at 6. There's our live phone bank. Give them a call. 522-7777. A lot of momentum coming with the win on on Saturday. Thought the boys played well in all three phases. Indiana was one game now. The sign of a good team is who can move forward and get to the next one. We have a 24-hour rule, so it's 24 hours, and now we're on to Rutgers. Back to work week for Nebraska football and a short week at that. A Friday night road game at Rutgers awaits. And a win keeps Nebraska in first place in the Big Ten West Division. That division, winnable. And